Hey everybody, welcome to the Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andres Salazar, and I'm here joined with... Ariel Celestino. All right, Ariel. Thank you for uh, joining us, everybody, today. Today we're going to... We're going to do a little hop, skip, and a jump in our timeline of heavy metal. The fifth episode is not about um, issue five. It's actually going to be the issue in August in 1979. Um, we kind of picked this slightly out of a hat, but the other reason why we wanted to kind of jump in a little bit after those, uh, that kind of the first class, we'll call them, of yeah. artists uh, in heavy metal. And... It's not like we can't keep talking about them, but I wanted to just kind of change it up a little bit and kind of see some of the other brilliant artists um, that that come across this magazine. So I thought, and I really love the, this cover. The um, cover. The who co is this guy? Do you know who this guy is? I don't is? know who this is, but um, what awesome. I want to say about this cover is that it's August 1979. It's right on the cusp <clears throat> of being 80s. Yeah. And if you look at art, even pop art that came you know, like stuff that Warhol was doing in the yeah. 80s. Yeah, yeah. Or um, tons of airbrush artists that came up in the 80s, too. Yeah. So this is, this is like, very much of the time. It's mm -hmm. very indicative of what was going on in commercial art and mm -hmm. uh, and illustration in the, in the 80s. So mm -hmm. it's kind of cool that right at the cusp of the 80s, you kind of see the indication of where illustration was was sort of venturing into. I always liked this, like, um, the lines. There's no black. You know what I mean? Yeah. I always like, for some reason, that really is kind of a, just a neat look where they put this, like, frosting frisket. white. Yeah, yeah frisket, yeah, you know. frisket to get those hard yeah. lines and then get the gradations. Yeah. And, you know, kind of, it reminds me of, like, lo, for some reason, like, lowrider, pinstriping type stuff. You I, know what I mean? It, 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 it's like, coming um, out of that era of, like, you know, people using airbrushes for that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and And really, like, embracing the look of that blatantly like not yeah. trying to make it look photorealistic but yeah. using using it using the airbrush as a distinct look onto itself you know yeah and this so just about this this is before digital this is some guy yeah. who had a you know maybe it was maybe this big the original heavy metal maybe design a, maybe i don't know maybe twice up maybe at twice the up, most you know so it's like this and he had to airbrush that sucker yeah. i mean that's a lot of work i mean that's like yeah that's serious. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. He's using orange, yellow, white, black. I mean, maybe think about other it. Things. This would I be mean, a lot of work that's in a Photoshop. That's a lot of work. And this is no undoes, man. This is like straight on the, you know, straight. And yeah. These were probably two different pieces of art. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I would I, I, definitely, I would say I 100%. Think, and then they put them together in production. Right. But, uh, yeah, like. That's like a, that, I want, And I wonder that, if that the same like artist did, did this yeah. lettering. It could be like. I don't know because of the frame. This framing makes me want to think it is, but oh, you maybe never it is. Because look, the 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 signature is right there. I don't know. Right in it, he could have. He could. Uh, he could have done it all as one piece. Actually, it's pretty. It's pretty epic, though. It's great. I mean, imagine like getting all the getting this done. Yeah. And then, fucking something up over here. <laughs> like, oh shit! I gotta start over. Well, now. and unlike a lot of other magazines and comics. Heavy metal, it's they start changing their title. I mean, meaning they're not just slapping on the same yeah, title. Yeah. They're like getting someone to art, you know what I mean? To yeah. art up the title. And, and it's it's always like done differently. Yeah, we'll see not, it. We'll like see. in the old days, you know, the same like yeah. just stock color. Yeah, they're but starting they, yeah, to get they're starting to kind of play with it, the letter like forms are always the same. Right. But but someone's but actually doing is, the, is is yeah. is someone's incorporated into the art, yeah. Yeah, Cause which, I think which is cool. Yeah, I dig it. Okay, let's let's dive into uh, Franklin Jones, Dracula. Oh, dude, I don't think I ever saw that. I, I haven't either. I remember when it came out. No, I have no idea. Who did that? John Williams did the music. Yeah. Huh. Who directed it? Um. Anybody that was do we even, directed by? I don't know, I don't that know who that is. Now yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Might have been the only thing he did. Okay. His content page is kind of cool and a little bit different. Yeah, it is. It's more designy. Yeah. I got this full image here. We're gonna see. I don't even know some of these names, so I'm excited to kind of check this stuff out. Thou oh, sorry. 
It's okay. Val Mer- Meyerick, who has done work for like Marvel and oh, okay. Epic Comics, and uh, I think he did that book Coyote, or with uh, Steve Englehart. That was an Epic comic. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I don't know that. And author Sudam is there. We know him. Yeah. Um, I think it's like Mobius is still is still in Bombo here. Day. Kaza. Kaza, who I love. And then Starlin. Starlin's done a couple things. He's, yeah. I've seen him, you know. Well, he started venturing out and doing like uh, the Metamorphosis or what a, a Metamorphosis Odyssey. Was that what it was called? Oh, maybe. And I don't know if this piece is related. No, it's not. But uh, he started getting into painted comics very early on, too. Like right about this time, this mm-hmm. is 79, right? Because yep. Epic Comics started coming out when? 80. 80. 80. Is right? The, is, yep. What do you think about that? The epic uh, Marvel's response oh, to I think it totally. heavy metal? I think it totally is. Yeah. I think it compl- 100%. I mm-hmm. think it is. It is. Hey, wow. There's a market for adult comics. Um, this format works. We can sell it in the newsstands. I mean, we have another place yeah. to put it. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, they don't go heavy on the Euro. They no. uh, there's more American like Barry Windsor Smith yeah. and, and the, Jake the stories and are other more things. They're more they're, they're more, more but you get you get the TNA a little bit uh, that you would in this. A lot of the chicken stuff's in there. It's really good. It's yeah, painted co- stuff. The Cody like, Starbucks stuff. Yeah, is probably yeah, that's his what it best is. stuff. Well, you, uh, <laughs> like yeah, I, it's I, really I know everyone good. loves American flag, but I think American. Maybe, but the painted uh, stuff, which is like I, I flat, think, uh, I think gouache. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I think that's his. I like it a lot. I like that stuff. He's a lot. great on. De- he's great with costumes and design. Yeah, and that kind of stuff. That's his. That's his bread and butter. And and period stuff. He loves period. Sure. Um, which you can tell in his costumes a lot of period kind of. Yes, yeah, American flags. Yeah. Great example of that. Like um, the classic pulp vibe. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what this is. This is a little editorial, maybe. Oh no, this letters column. Letter column. Not a letter or, column. Like a little it? intro page that they do that kind of like describes what's going down. Oh, okay. You know, I like this note from the editor, I guess. Okay, I like this. Yeah, I don't know who that is, but that's like it's cool. a lot of airbrush stuff yeah. in there too. But that looks like it's shrunken down a lot from the this? original. What is this? Oh, this thing? is uh, you never saw this? No. I've got the actual. I've got the. What uh, is this? The Walter Simonson. It's a. It's an oh. adaptation of the of the uh, the movie or yeah, so written so not, by it, Archie Goodwin and illustrated by Walter Simonson. So did it? Wasn't there a book of? Ridley Scott's like storyboards no. and his pre production stuff that he did for it. No, I don't know. Or is know. that Blade Runner? Am I? I, I have seen. There's some seen... book somewhere of his, like, the, uh, art, I... his actual art because he's an artist or was. He's... Yeah, but, but I, he does storyboards for all his stuff, or at least he yeah. used to. At least in the era of Alien and Blade Runner, he did yeah. storyboards for all his stuff. Yeah. So somewhere there, and you can find it on the internet, somewhere there's, there's you know, storyboards for all of Alien. Um, I've seen the alien ones. But I've never no, seen. But there's no published. I've never. C- 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 if there was a book, dude, I'd for, if, right of that. I'd have it. <laughs> right. I, That's I would like have this, it. That's, this is one of my favorite movies of all. Time. Oh yeah, it is it's, my. It, it, it is this the thing. I love the. Thing, oh yeah, yeah. which is the weird thing. because the thing is kind of Carpenter's answer to them making Alien. Like I read an interview, well, and like it might have been way, in what? Way well, because or... Alien, in a lot of ways, according to Dan O'Bannon, is sort of based on the thing from Another World, which is what the John Carpenter's The Thing is a remake of. Mm. So, when Alien came out, John Carpenter was like, uh, I don't "Want to quote him?" Directly, but something to the effect like, oh, yeah, Alien was basically a ripoff of the thing from another world. So, like, mm. he wanted to do his own version of it. Huh. And there's similarities with it, right? Yeah. You're in this isolated area yeah. and you you get yeah, picked yeah. off one by one by this thing that you can't f- figure out what the hell it is. Right. The Alien has shape-shifting abilities to a s- s- certain extent. Especially, that's really... Hmm. More prevalent in the first one, where like you see the alien kind of unfolding from like tight little areas. Yeah. Um, hmm. But I never. I'll track down. I'll track I've, down the interview. I've always thought of them as very different. Distinct. Well, they are because it, that that goes to show 
how much of an effect an artist or a director has on the source material. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I see a lot of that stuff right now on, on like, uh, on Twitter and stuff where people will, like, take the same script and give it to two different artists and show mm -hmm. what, what the differences are mm -hmm. and what the approaches are. And they're so different to illustrate the contribution that the artist makes yeah. to, to comics. Mm, right, right. Right, so when you say written by uh, Warren Ellis with yeah. art by, like, you know, whoever it is that's collaborating, right. you know, Derek Robertson, whatever, right, right. Uh, you, you're... <laughs> It's kind of like you're not crediting the artist enough, because mm. the, the the way the artist interprets it interprets it, that he's script. The DP, he's the, he's the director, director. He, he's he's the casting. Yeah, <laughs> he's costume all those, design, costume design. You know, set so design, production. so it's yeah. a huge, it's a bigger contribution than just like art. Like you know, just somebody gives you a description of what to draw. There's still all kinds of problem solving that you got to do from that description, Big time. right? Yeah. It, you know, translating those words into a visual image that has some kind of impact is yeah. is not as easy as it sounds. Yeah. So. That's a good point. Oh. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. But I want to check this out. Yeah. I uh, so, let me have a copy of that. Hmm. 100, 112 pages for seven bucks. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. First story. Val was it Merrick? Merrick. I think. I do not know him. This is new. Yeah, he's a. Uh, so it looks like uh, I don't know a lot about a him personally. Watercolor with some airbrush. Yeah. I love the color though. I think I like this, that. Is, this is nice too. I like yeah, the that. textures. Just, yeah. Well, uh, I was the, oh, uh, the, the incorporation the, of the, the lettering. The lettering, yeah, yeah. I just like that. Uh, God, we take that for granted so much nowadays. Oh, yeah, dude. You know? I mean, because everything like, I, I think I can like find someone... a font that's oh, yeah. just like that. But like, he, like, got back. a ruler and had to freaking make no, those damn curves with something. Yeah. Very, uh, not as vibrant colors mm -hmm. as uh, like, Corbin, uh, but, like, a lot of the like same, same, same kind technique, of technique. Right? And, uh... Yeah. The rendering style looks really similar. Like, you know, the gradations, yeah. it's, mm -hmm. it's painted, but you can kind of tell that it was started from a drawing. Yeah. How much of uh, how much of an influence do you feel that, like, Richard Corbin was on, like, uh, Simon Bisley? You know, I when I think of Bisley, I always think of, of course, Frazetta. That's his, you know, that's... And I even think maybe even Sienkiewicz. Uh, yeah, and, I see both of that. those guys definitely. Um, but I think the other, I don't really think of Corbin. I see a lot of Corbin in his stuff. In his uh, just the muscular, the, 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 the kind over, of grotesque the, muscular. Yeah, the over exaggerated anatomy. Some yeah. of the some of the but, the or, things. Are you that, talking about his painting too? Or, his painting. Or, or, his painting because yeah, it, because oh. like uh, one of the things the similarities that I see is like you'll see a little faint like bit this. of a of a holding line in Corbin stuff. And you'll mm -hmm. see that same kind of thing where, like, you can see that they both start from line work, from, like, uh, inked line work, and then build from there. Yeah, I mean, when he does some of those heavy metal covers in the 90s, yeah. where he does, like, all of them, because yeah. him and Kevin are buddies, yeah, yeah. Uh, when he was doing those, it totally looks like an ink drawing that he would do on board, yeah. and then he would just... He yeah. would, you know, acrylic and oil it, it all over. And you can see, I like it. I love it. Because it almost looks like a cartoon. You know, it's got that yeah. pop kind of yeah. cartoon look. But he's very good at the volume. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. I, um, I love that yeah. combination of cartoony and, and, yeah. and sort of uh, realistic kind yeah. of rendering. Or, or at well, least Where Frazetta wouldn't. Frazetta wouldn't do that. He would, it would just be painted, you know, I mean, the, the green forest with the skin body. It yeah. wouldn't, you wouldn't see... Yeah, no, no, no you know, line, no, yeah, no, no contour no, lines no, or anything. No, it was I mean, more you, you pure shadow. Painting. Yeah, you would have some shadow, of course, to for volume, but you wouldn't get that like yeah. hard. I mean, you, you would, hard you, you would get some people that would even, uh, you might find some people that might even argue that what Bisley and and uh, Corbin are doing is not real painting because of that. Mm. But I mean, I don't know, man. I don't, I, know, I about that. I don't know if I go over that. <laughs> I, I, I'm not talking <laughs> about that. that. I love their stuff, and I think that it's... Oh, yeah. The Space painting. Adventures of Morris White by Dennis Sire. Don't know who this Yeah, is. I don't, I'm I not like familiar this. with this guy other than, than what he's done here. Again, I really like... I'm just going to keep mentioning lettering because I'm... 
thinking about that lately. That's a really cool car. Yeah, it's great. This is really good. This reminds me of a very, almost like a Neil Al Adams or, or, yeah. It's really well done. It's clean. Yeah. Face is only a little very yeah. stylized. Uh -huh. I dig it. I mean, this was before the 80s. And that's a trip sometimes. And you yeah. just think of like all the comics in mainstream Western comics that happened way after this. Look at the, it's a great thighs. Like the, just the volume, just I love those contour lines showing her yeah. calf. Around. Yeah, and there's not this a lot of really like. really good. That's like, it's just holding lines. Yeah. Or, or a clear line. Well, how do yeah. they call that one? When you don't uh, cross hatch or whatever. Yeah, it's really well done. And then, sorry, I'm just going to talk. I love these little wheels. Those are hard to do sometimes. You know, yeah, that perspective. This right here. Sure. Using some French curve, which I cannot work, use a French curve to save my life. Yeah. I need to just like do it for like a month. I like this. It's interesting how they they do kind of skip a color of black and white. You know, yeah. it's not it's not hundred percent color. Yeah, they're, they're uh, I mean, the maybe editor later was, on later on they do maybe go that route, but a lot of times they do have like a least of the editor of the book was definitely conscious of that, I think. I think, and you, you, think have to. you think it's cost savings or are they just want to showcase other styles or other some artists? guys work in black and white and some guys you know But like Drew Lay did a bunch in black and white, but then he'll do the the Salambo yeah. in not, color and so and in American comics not you know you may even find that today where like people are just pencilers just inkers just yeah. like very specialized where I think the European artists like the Japanese artists well I think Japanese artists were more using more assistance and stuff like that but yeah guys like Julian and Mobius could do it all yeah you well know, like they're coming from that background so where, what do you think of Jock because Jock reminds me of someone who could do it all. He does black yeah, and white I, I beautifully. Like, I think he's... And then he'll he'll paint. I mean, it's probably digital, but he'll paint out. He's an amazing designer, he too. <laughs> he's an amazing designer, the, the, too. The angles, the cars, the... It's really stylized. Yeah, really I like his well. work a lot, yeah. I, I, I don't think he, he does he, enough... I, I feel uh, like he, he started almost like a Bradstreet, but then took it to, like, another level. Yeah. As far as design. Uh, design I mean, and it's more it's more abstract than the Bradstreet ever got, which is yeah, which is something that because he's so married to the photograph, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, or, because or at least Bra the beginning. Bradstreet you know, is a photographer covers. too. He, oh, uh, I didn't. I got this Bradstreet book, and he talks a little bit. Well, yeah, that's so he shoots all the stuff. I assumed he would shoot the shots for the Punisher. You yeah, know, so the, he's uh, very very much into photography, and that's what his his kind of thing was was to combine those mm. two things. Seamlessly, okay. To, to, That's and why you he... can see it in his work. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, mean, even his early stuff that was just like you know pen and ink stuff. You can see that he photo referenced a lot. But then you go. Then let's talk about Adam Alex Ross, who photographs everything too. But then Alex, I feel, is more of a storyteller, sequential artist. You know what I mean? Like he. He's more. You know he, I mean? he takes more of a traditional approach where, like, you're using photo reference to, to, to as reference. Yeah. Whereas broad, Brad well, Street, he just go right on on the he, photo. He, it looks like he L goes like, right light, on light the photo or whatever. Light box it and incorporate the photo itself mm. as as a basis for the color oh. and like use digital tools right. to like composite right. the whole right. thing. Where Alex just uses models basically. He's using the models yeah, and he's, he's, okay, that's your and then he's painting man. that. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay. he's drawing it and painting it. Right, right, right. So it's so, actually... It, yeah. You know, Broad Street... What is it? Brad Street or Broad Street? I'm sorry. It's, like, Brad, it's Brad Street. Brad Street. <laughs> Tim Brad Street. Um, yeah. Big guy. He, he He's he's taking a more modern approach and a more like, you know, like the whole thing the with using street. reference and stuff like that. Like, I was just watching um, a video by this YouTuber. I think his name is like Ethan Brewer. It's like this hyperactive young guy who works mm -hmm. in animation and just he's talking about how they use uh photo reference in animation and how they'll take it and like oh. do a draw over of a, a of a you know photo reference just because they got to work fast mm. so they're not like worried yeah. about like 
oh, this person cheated because they yeah, used yeah. photo reference or yeah. they, they kind of traced over a photo, yeah. which what he's doing is not tracing. It's like using using the pose as like a reference and doing a draw over yeah. and like saying, oh, okay, the eye goes here, like yeah. using it as perspective reference. Yeah. Um, and they're speed. not worried about that. And illustrators for generations have not worried about using mm. a, a photo mm. reference. Mona Lisa was a reference. <laughs> you're looking at a model like you go to life drawing classes. Oh, you're oh, using oh, yeah, reference. Yeah, yeah. You know you gotta. You, yeah. You know. That's interesting. Well, then you have someone like David Mack who uses reference, but then he abstracts the yeah, hell abs out of it. Abstracts that out. So yeah. you almost can't tell, but no, he's then those well, are definitely yeah. girls. Sinkevich does that a lot too with his movie poster stuff. If you've seen like the Unforgiven yeah. poster, yeah. it's clearly that he's yeah. gotta use photo yeah. reference yeah. to get the likenesses. Yeah. Or but, or Drew um is his name Drew, the the Star Wars poster uh, guy. Drew Struzan. Yeah. The same way, right? I yeah. That's like Mark Hamill, and that's, you know. Yeah, and he'll use Indiana photographs. Indiana Jones, that's for He'll use game. a projector yeah. to get. Well, I've got this video of that would making be kind of, cool. of, like him a lot. of uh, you should find this video. I'm sure you can probably find it on YouTube or whatever. But he's he does not this Hellboy poster, but the Hellboy poster that was used for, for the... <clears throat> The for the movie, movie release, yeah, the okay. first one, yeah. where he goes through his whole process oh, from cool. several black and white comps to the finished thing, and like hmm. he goes through the whole thing. That's cool. And he talks about that too. He goes, "Yes, I use photo re reference. Do is that cheating? No. It's hmm. taken me years to learn how to draw. It's taken me years to 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 make even a tracing look." You can trace something, and it can look like a tracing. Ugly and shitty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or you can use <laughs> your drawing what? skill and like take that photo reference yeah. and make it into something make substantial and different from yeah. the photo, but still. Yeah. Dude, talking art. Yeah. Freeways. Um, don't know who Lee, Lee Mars, Mars is, but I really these... like this. Yeah. <laughs> I like this. I like the colors in that. So this stuff looks more cartooned to me. Yeah. Right? Like more yeah. out of his head than yeah. than using photo reference. Yeah. Great colors though. Yeah, I love the colors. And this is really cool. These I mean, I would um, you know, this is like blue line method, I guess. Yeah. Right? Cuz it looks painted, but then there's I would, I would, there's contour lines Yeah, and stuff I would like. I would think or all 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 in on the on the same paper. You do kind of see a little kind of Mo the Mobius oh, sure. a little bit, you know? I mean, I don't know if he's French or not, but you, I would imagine if I was a French guy who's into comics, you're always looking to Jean Girard. You're always like, you know... He is the pinnacle. You know, and so everyone's kind of aping him. And later on, I was looking at some some issues like in the 2000s, the 90s, and you see these guys, you're like, that looks a lot like Mobius. I mean, I mean, it's almost like he created a style, like that whole like country. Well, like, look, look, country let's but, you know. look at American comics when Jim oh, Lee oh, hit, uh, hit Neil Adams. Neil right. Adams, Jack Kirby, right? You know, there's early all these on. guys who ape them. You know, Jim Aparo, whoever it was. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, Jim Aparo came from the same background as, as Neil true. Adams, so yeah, he was a he no, was you're a, right, you're a, right. a commercial illustrator. So I think I see a lot of that, like Bob Peak. You know, '60s illustration, yeah. commercial yeah. illustration yeah. style in both apparel and Neil Adams well, stuff. Well, Bob P is like Sinkevich. He's the king, man. Is, yeah, I feel it's very much like Bob. Yeah, as a kid, I mean, poster. I had seen like, I'd seen the the, the Apocalypse Now poster, I'd seen yeah. the the yeah. Superman poster, but I didn't yeah. know who that guy was yeah. till I read an interview in like yeah, the early '80s. You got that freaking book? I want oh, so dude. bad. I want oh, that I love book. That book. Why don't you <laughs> look that. at it. <laughs> You can two dollars for no, five no. minutes. <laughs> oh, that's a great book. Um, it is amazing to look at. Yeah, this stuff is cool story. really cool. I like this little futuristic surfboard deal. And still, like, while he's stealing little, not stealing, but like you could see influences of like you're mm -hmm. saying Mobius and stuff like that. Still very yeah. distinct style. Yeah. What is this? I don't know who. Uh... There's another Interiors. French guy who I think does I other like stuff this like this. I recognize his it reminds style me a little bit. Of, it reminds me a little bit of Tardy. Yeah, a little, Tardy. Bit, a little bit. Of that. Just that the thick, this kind of like almost to me, it's almost like Gilbert line. Hernandez kind of. Yeah. Ish oh yeah. Too. I mean, yeah. Oh, I would say for sure. Yeah. And I wonder. And there's they remind me of each other. Yeah, that that right there could be a, a character in Hell, in Love and Rockets. Yeah. Right. This whole this whole panel. And maybe here. he uses a lot more blacks than than Gilbert would use, but. Yeah, Gilbert would stripes here. And, yeah. You know, he would put a little more. But that's a mood thing, too. Yeah. 
you know, for yeah. the type of stories. Uh, yeah, these are mods or somebody maybe. Some cigarette cool. chain smoking French person. Yeah. And I always like just these little Yeah, those are just, great. just little just the right amount. That's harder than you might think. Yeah. You know, you go go crazy on it, but just enough little texture. The only guy I've seen go crazy on it that makes it work is like Mobius. Yeah, who just like you can cover the page with lines yeah. and it it, it yeah. doesn't look overworked. Yeah. Now this was that guy that this this guy here, I guess he's the writer Pusik. and the artist, but he's gonna do these colored pieces that are that we think could be um this kind of layered, yeah. layered similar uh, to the approach that like Richard Corbin yeah, uh, um, did for Dan. Which is like uh, using color separations but airbrushing on the color separations to yeah. let different values of mm -hmm. particular colors come through. Yeah, because there's actually different purples there because of maybe yeah. that gray behind it. You can kind of see a lighter and a darker. These look like X wings. I don't know if they're supposed to. I'm getting. A I mean, it's '79, so everything is oh. probably influenced by oh, yeah. Star Wars. Think about one. that for a minute. Yeah. yeah, that came out just a couple of years before this. So, yeah, there's these, there's these cultural touchstones yeah. that everyone's like, oh, we've all seen this. We all the know. The success of you know of, of Star Wars and the success of like heavy metal. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It, it was just as people were ready for like yeah. science fiction at the time. Yeah. Like you know, they're because yeah, two thousand and one. That was early. You, that was six before that. Yeah, you see, two thousand one right? kind of started maybe. Yeah, a but little people bit. had there hadn't been a film of that quality, and, and you know, I'm not putting Star Wars in the same league as far as like right. filmmaking or art right. as two thousand one. I'm a big right. Stanley Kubrick fan, so I can't right. do that. But <laughs> but. The quality of the special effects, the quality of the storytelling yeah, was gosh. like really, yeah. it was really fantastic. Like right. that's why Star Wars is still a thing. Yeah. That's yeah. why it made such a huge cultural impact. Yeah. I mean, it spawned this, I don't know, this is stuff that's already like two or, well, yeah. no, not oh, this the, stuff. Well, but some of the stuff was made years ago. Yeah, right? especially oh, in the early issues. In the early ones, like that was, that like, was two three, years ago. Before. Yeah, like three or four years is when um, Metal Herlot. I think Metal Herlon right. started in 74, so it's right. like three years of yep. build up, <clears throat> built up material. We have to do an episode of Roger Dean. Yeah, he's I have fantastic. A, I just have man. one of his books. He has a number of books. Yeah. But I, I don't have any of those. I'd love to see uh, that. Yeah, I'll bring them. I love his stuff. Yeah. It's, it's so fantastic. atmospheric. It's so unique the way he did it. The way he, did, he made 3D models of things. He just did. did. He really? He did, yeah. It's really Yeah, neat. see, I don't really know a lot about stuff. Roger Dean. I remember seeing those Yes covers, really, yeah. and that was my favorite part of Yes, like yeah. Roger Dean. I yeah, I have them, but for the art, I I yeah. find them and oh. I bought them for the art. God. I mean, I listened to them. I, it's cool. That's what album covers? There's a couple are songs are so I like. great, like but, good yeah. album covers, like you know, with the gatefold. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Like that Don't stuff. Do is... that now. CDs, you know, you get the booklet, and sometimes yeah, and it's kind of fun because you are get like, like yeah. We know about CDs because I took my 17 year old daughter to um, Amoeba a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And she's like, I'm like, I thought you'd want to come. She's like, why are we coming? Here? I thought you want. This is like my favorite place. She's like, I don't have a CD player. Who's your CD player? I'm like, <laughs> so she bought like DVD, Doctor Who DVDs. Yeah. But it's like, it's still a good score. Uh, it's good. But you know what I'm like, yeah. there's no movie. All the, all the music. Well, think so, about it. The... So I bought CDs and vinyl. Because most I, like, computers nowadays don't, don't most have, laptops don't even my have wife, CD My wife players. doesn't even have one, of, yeah. You know, so, yeah. It's crazy, dude. Don't get me started. Yeah. Uh, who's this? Oh, this is Mobius. Mobius. Yeah. I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> now, he, I think he, he was always two up or something. So Stuart Ng told I, me something. I mean, I'm, uh, told me something, but it, it, this isn't the right size. He's I would think he'd have to be two up, man, because there's so much detail, especially in something like that. Like this, yeah. I would love to see how he does this if he sketched it. I mean, he must have penciled this to a degree. He's not doing a June June Coon thing. I don't thing, know, man. June Yoon or whatever. You see some video right? of him drawing, and he does kind of do that kind of stuff. But I mean, the staircase, and then the, the staircase and going up, and he's like, I don't know, that dude is. You know, what we need to talk about too that. is Monero. Yeah, I like because Monero's he, 
rem you know, they have that simple line style, but they're very different. But but yeah. there's some similarities. There's some similarities, that, that, um, obviously. What do you that, think about uh, Crepa? I've only read one, and I didn't like it. It was Justine, and I was like, I wasn't. I got the wrong book. Is it too? It was it too like the, sexual. The, 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 the sexual. The overtly. It was heavily sexual. <laughs> it's uh, basically yeah. porn. Yeah, I mean, it's. I want to read some other stuff of his. Yeah, I, that, that, I, I that, think that's got a little more flavor. I think than just eroticism. Is, I think that's what he was all about. Is that what? Yeah. I mean, I don't, like I don't think silk, you're gonna get kind of like uh, silk was all about. You know, you're not gonna get. Although I love silk. You're not gonna get like a big, uh, like you know, deep storyline out of him. Yeah. I mean, really, the the thing is the visuals entirely for that. Yeah. Which you know, is, you know, you know, talk about when I say still silk, right? What's silk? Jim Jim Silk. No, who's that? Okay, he's an illustrator. He's he's um kind of cheesecake. Oh, okay. But he's very good. You would know it if you like, saw uh, if you look Jim Vargas? Silk. Vargas. That's my phone there. <laughs> um, we'll look it up okay. between episodes. Yeah, yeah. You, you you'll know. It. He's at cons all the time. Oh, yeah. Older guy. He's kind of like a contemporary of Storinko. Okay. Uh, anyway, so he's just doing these little like two page, but they're continued. Yeah. I'm assuming it, 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 at some point they're compiled in one of those continued. like Mobius epic book. I you know, I, I haven't seen this whatever. one. I haven't seen this one reprinted. The uh, garage of. The oh, yeah, 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 I'm no, sorry. That is one. Yeah, That's yeah, one yeah. This is, garage, this is Air Tight Garage. This is collected in, uh, I, I don't recognize this page, uh, but it, it must be in that collected Air Tight yeah. Garage from Epic. Yeah. Which those are hard to find. I got That's a few of them. Too. I got all the Mobius ones, I think. This so, this, it looks different. Doesn't sometimes these panels look like it's a different guy? Just I think because he's of, just, ver just because so the, versatile yeah. that he's... Like just all blacks. It just, for some reason, it looks like... This guy is drawn it? so much know, by this dude. point. Like, look at how yeah. different the blueberry. Like, yeah. Oh, you would look gosh. at blueberry and like think that that's the guy. pinnacle of somebody's yeah. career, yeah. and then he's got like what another thirty years yeah. beyond that of yeah. amazing stuff, yeah. and never stopped innovating. Really. Yeah. Some oh. Bodet. There's the Baudet. You. He's still going. He's still doing this. Yeah, this is a different storyline, but like, yeah. you know, but it he's, he's his, his, his trademark yeah. lizards and animal characters. Mm -hmm. Little bulby, techy stuff. Yeah, just a very distinct style yeah. and like amazing. You can see is why he was... Markers? So, or, I, mean, I think know, it's Markers. You think it's Markers? Yeah. yeah. Even though like Markers with, probably with little... in the 70s were, were, there were these Markers called Design Markers that were alcohol-based Markers. Uh, I don't hmm. think you could find them anymore. Hmm. I still have some of my really old dried up ones that I just saved for nostalgia reasons because you can't find them anymore. Huh. But, and you can see, you can see how graffiti artists yeah. took to this. Yeah. Like bubble lettering in New yeah. York during the 70s. I mean, that's, you could. I used to do bubbling in the 80s, bubble letters. Yeah. Name and stuff. That was I mean, story. everybody like, yeah. uh, Definitely. And and you know characters you'd see in graffiti, mm -hmm. very much. Yeah. Simple, few lines. But like rendered, you know, enough, rendered enough to make it yeah, look like uh, super uh, interesting. Identifiable. Yeah, you can see what's going on. Clarity. Yeah, he gets like he's good at getting like almost a watercolor effect yeah. out of markers. Right, that's what it looks like at times. I mean, good marker work is that. Oh, what's he's, this? It's kind of neat. I don't know who I'm assuming uh Jay Michael is the artist. Yeah, very cool. Pencil yeah, art. pencil art done. Love to do sometimes that. It's, too. Sometimes it's hard to like reproduce this well for it to show up. Especially so, at this time. But I yeah. think that the quality but now you can of, change the levels. But back then I think you do that photo mechanically like you know, people that were wizards at printing mm -hmm. could figure that stuff out how to how to adjust for that. Because yeah. you see that, you see like original art, original comic art, like in these artist editions where you can see like pencil mm -hmm. erased and you can see like stuff whited out, but you never see that in the finished comic book. No. Well, like so, I was showing you with the Lone Wolf and Cub. It's like the original Lone Wolf and Cub shows all these beautiful brush strokes. You look at the comic printed by Dark Horse, you don't get none. You just get black junk. Yeah. You, so there's a big discrepancy of like the yeah. printing i don't know who's in charge of like yeah the that masters was a whole, and getting that that was a whole thing. dialed dialed in a whole 
different discipline in how to reproduce right. art on a printed page that like we don't even really have to deal with because of the digital world now. Yeah. Like you're saying, like you, you know, scanning in your pencils and adjusting levels is yeah. like no big deal. Yeah. Once I figured it out, I do it. <laughs> yeah. At first, I was like, oh shit. Uh, I don't know Peter Cooper. I don't know Peter Cooper either. But oh yeah, yeah, dude. Do. do we know Peter Cooper? Yeah, Peter Cooper is. Uh, he's still doing. I think he might still be doing Spy versus Spy and oh, Mad okay. Magazine. And this is this, this is, is really, really cool, actually. Oh, Peter this is Cooper. Kind of neat. Style is neat. more. What he's more well known for is like the stenciled out, um, airbrush art. Mm. Well, yeah. So this seeing looks, his look. pen work is is is, is kind of different. This is neat though. I I do like all the layers of um, airbrush or texture. or whatever he's using. Looks like airbrush probably or or yeah. Maybe he's a, he's a big airbrush yeah. dude, and he does really like kind of abstract yeah. looking. Yeah, that's not easy to do to make that look so clean. Like and no. just like perfect Gr gradations. Yeah, yeah, just perfectly made. with an airbrush. That's like control, man. That's really cool. Yeah, this is just, I, I like this image. It's kind of neat. Cool. Yeah, it's very different than um, than the work he's more well known for. And this has got a kind of a, gives me hip hop flavor, some kind of a <laughs> She's vibe. Adidas, man. Yeah. He's rocking Adidas. Okay, we've Kaza. seen this guy. Yeah. He is amazing. He's another guy that reminds me of like Crumb. Yeah, in 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 kind of just the uh, yeah he's he, to you me know, he's kind of like a crumb Mobius over, yeah hybrid. crumb and Mobius overwrought not overwrought but just like heavily um, cross hatched or, or textured or yeah whatever you want I mean, to say. and this is what he looks like he puts himself oh, in his oh, comics a lot I like the coloring too yeah he's got a great really color good. sense too yeah this is great the, the, here again probably I'm sure blue line. Yeah, this is great. The way he, the muscles, all that right there. Yeah. It's really neat. It's good. This is so, like, incredible that people were doing this, but then in American comics, you're still doing flat colors at the time. Right? You know? Like... Yeah. It took the digital sort of revolution in image comics to, like, incorporate any kind of real rendering mm -hmm. in the... Uh, as far as, like, you know, traditional mainstream superhero comics. Right. You know, guys always like, uh, you know, Jim Starlin and Richard Corbin doing fully painted, and Arthur Sidem too. Mm -hmm. I dig this. Yeah, he's great, man. Yeah, it's really nice. He he's up there definitely in, in my um, and do you, do you do you think this is done like this is the board and he's actually pasting up these these words? I mean, was that is this how they did it back then in the wild? I don't know. Here? I, I mean, they could have done the, the, or the do words on probe? an overlay. Yeah. I would think with this kind of work where you're already working with overlays, you know, you're using the blue line method, yeah. which is like you print out the... Uh, That's nice. Does everybody know what blue line method is? Maybe we should break it down for... It, it, uh, it, it's, you print out a, um, a very uh, sort of dimmed down version mm -hmm. of... Uh, you know, like you would do it in, in, non, least, non in, in photo. Photoshop. You would like, you know, turn the opacity down on your line work yeah. to about 10% or something. Print mm -hmm. that out and then paint over it. Yeah. And on a separate acetate layer, uh, like a sheet of plastic, you'd have the ink yep. over it. And you'd work on the faded out version. You'd paint it and then you'd overlay the, the, on the ink on top of it so you mm -hmm. get the, the best of both worlds to mm -hmm. a certain degree like a yeah. painted under underpainting with like yep. contour lines on top yep. of it yep which is the way now that, that everybody works that way digitally if you think if you think yeah. about it you take your you take your inks yeah set them to multiply and then paint under it that's the way everybody yeah. does you know yeah. comics now but like I, at this time it's, i actually multiply my colors am i doing a reverse <laughs> No, I mean, <laughs> I mean that's what I always do. I so I don't I, think there's I, any so right for some reason I always have my inks as the bottom, just because that's the first file. It's like, oh. I, and then I'm putting the color is my you know add a layer. That's my colored, yeah. and then I just multiply that. Which 
There's, I there's mean, since, a, since it's just white, there's a bunch it doesn't of, do anything except for the black, well, then just makes it It doesn't change it the colors, the quality of the colors, or you may like it better anyways. And you're, it doesn't it, do anything. I mean, because when you multiply when you're, the, the when, red on top of a black line, it's just going to be black. Yeah. It, it doesn't, doesn't change, it doesn't change the quality the of the red when you when you switch it to multiply? No. The red stays, because, because the only thing that's underneath is oh, that's white, white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't do anything. Yeah. I use multiply all the time in, oh. in like my commercial stuff like just as like an added texture or something yeah. like that like you know yeah. it, but then like you know i may duplicate the same thing add a multiply set it to multiply set it to overlay and then mess yeah. with the opacity just to get a different yeah. vibe off something yeah. or bring like an element out right how does now how, what's the difference between dark what is darkened i never use darken but darkens just like mul pretty multiply, much but it does same. something different is it like just the next layer and not all layers or is it just no one i do really know? don't know yeah. i i know like light, light, lightning, <laughs> lightning is the same lightning screen are the same kind of things i always yeah. use multiply and screen that's what i do it, to me it's we might like, be it using 50 percent of the power <laughs> it, it, it seems a little clearer in both instances so yeah I, there is there is a there is something it does do something different i don't know what um uh, kenneth smith don't know this guy either. Don't but know it's it. really weird Trippy. and interesting. Yeah, what the hell? It's cool that stuff like this could be published, you know? Just like, here's some weird-ass, grotesque, Kelly uh, Jones-style, yeah. you know, stuff. Maybe Kelly Jones as a kid but was even re like, reading this. But even like, like, Corbin like, with the, with or the airbrush in, shading. Yeah. Or right, you know, writes and yeah. you know, the blobby stuff he would do. Yeah. This is great work, actually. This is not easy. This is that's that's yeah. That's, hard. that's probably like stream of consciousness kind of stuff. Like you just drew yeah. out these shapes, and yeah. then this is great. This, the this bus. has been going on for years. Paul Kirshner. Yeah, I love this guy's rendering style. So tight and I so neat. I would love neat. a book on just that. Just like a nice yeah. little book. They just have I don't all know those if one exists, but they're fun little story. They're a little and, weird. And, and really, what's cool about it to me is like this, um, this this sort of like very clean very traditional looking rendering style and like even the way he draws this very plain looking mm -hmm. every man juxtaposed against this absurd yeah nonsensical yeah non-story yeah and, and to me that's just so it's so there's like no explanation you're just like scratching your head yeah. very very like not quite lynching or like uh or Klaus, or it, yeah. it is surreal, but it's got its own flavor to it that predates what, what Klaus yeah. was doing. And, and yeah. I do shit. like that that Klaus uh, new uh, artist edition looks pretty rad. Yeah, it looks crazy. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm I've only read um, one of it. I've only read Ghost World. Yeah, Ghost World I like. A lot. I've not read Eight Ball. Yeah, well, Eight Ball is just basically um, like an anthology the, of all his stuff. That, yeah, I've I got a read bunch it. Of I want to get it, but I just haven't uh, had a like, to get what is it like a velvet glove yeah, cast yeah. in iron or whatever? Is that part of Eight Ball? Is that like that a was story? that appeared was in. That... It, it's it's a longer story, but it it was it's serialized eight in Eight Ball. Oh, so okay. he would put out Eight Ball, I guess, whenever he could, and it would just feature a bunch of his stuff. Now he doesn't do comics anymore. Is he just living off the the? I really don't know. Bucks on him that. He seems to be one of these guys that's like made a huge impact. I mean, normal people would know his, you know, oh, I used to read him when I was a kid. But then you don't see him. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's you just know, like, he, he, that's his life. A lot of his stuff has been uh, turned into movies like Ghost World. Yeah. You know, so depending on what kind of money he got for Ghost World and like Art, uh, art School Confidential and then w oh. w what else... Uh, you know, I know. I, off of yeah. two, you know, if you live pretty yeah. humbly, you could you can make that money last a long time. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Plus, he was already successful. He, you know, Ghost World's got to be, you know, a pretty great selling book. Everybody knows about that, right? I'm sure he's got a lot of printings. Yeah. yeah. Sure I mean, I've turned a lot of people onto that book even before I knew, yeah. like, who Daniel Klaus was. But just because I loved that whole story and the whole vibe of that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Um... Here's another guy. Yeah, I'm not. Magarin. Carney. Carries. Carries. 
there's got to be so many like French artists that you yeah. that are like fantastic that you've never or French or European yeah. guys that you've never oh, yeah. heard of. We That's know just only the like twenty a of the world. You know what I mean? If you think about, I mean, this like, magazine is a big part of my education to, to European yeah. comics, and at yeah. the time, like you know, early '80s and stuff, you really couldn't find anything that was European unless it was published by heavy metal. Yeah, I like this a lot. I don't know what it is, but it's really cool. I like this. The page layout is one, cool. One pager. Really cool yeah. style. That is neat. And Sympathy for the Devil. Yeah. Is this a... Um, Painted. Is this a legit uh, song? Oh. Mick Jagger? Oh, yeah. What do you know? Okay. How did they do that? I don't know. Is it a straight up? Is it a full on? Oh wow, we get a comic out of this. Huh. Yeah, it's an adaptation of the song. Pretty much. Oh, that's interesting. That's actually kind of that's a cool great. Yeah, I actually really like that idea. Yeah. I would love for someone to just go through an album and just like, hey, make a comic out of every song. And just I make mean, it, people make have done thing. that since. I mean, Cohe Coheed and Cambria has done that. I think. I, you know what they did? Yeah. I didn't know you knew about them. Yeah, I, I like you're that. like new. You're like old guy likes the new stuff. Oh, I love coheating. I just went really? to see them. They were at Comic Con, and uh, last year, and my friend who's a big fan of theirs wanted me to get their vinyl because they had like some yeah. like, like vinyls and stuff. And yeah, they had all, they had a whole booth at Comic Con selling their their yeah. comics and um, stuff. I'm like, what? The yeah, they did their whole oh, yeah, their it's, whole. They're thing. like a. Are they kind of like a rush? Album. Yeah, they're, they're like a concept guys, right? Yeah. So the like yeah, the wall there's a whole or... story. They did a comic. I picked it up. I don't remember being all that into mm -hmm. it but I really love their music I think they're a great band I just kind of neat though it's a great idea I wanted to yeah. do that because I'm interested in music and uh, art like uh, I wanted to do that this guy is great who's this the Sudan yeah I, I really the, like his stuff Sidem is it Sidem or, yeah, or I, I don't know you're right, I always you're right. say Sidem but uh, he gets a bad rap you because mentioned before that he was kind of an ass or something. No, happened. no, uh, it, it wasn't was it? that. From what I understand, I, I never met the dude, so I don't want to call him an ass because I don't know him personally. But, like, I guess a lot of people were pissed at him because he had swiped poses or oh. stuff like that. Which, you know, I don't, I don't know, man. Yeah. Like... There's that thing about like you know using reference and yeah. like you know like if you look at a lot of like modern dudes now like you know I don't know if Fifi does it but like Ed Pisker would will take like an existing cover yeah. like that that cover he did for um, Fantastic uh, Four Grand Design the alternate cover that was the thing that was basically the pose from Dark Knight Dark Returns Night. right yeah. and like that's that's cool. I I, I could I see. No problem with that. He's recontextualizing it and 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 basically you can't use that pose without knowing what it's referencing. Yeah. So I guess maybe there's a little bit of difference there. If he were to do something that's like some obscure just a blatant thing, yeah, that, that you like, lifted oh, off of something. But I mean, you know, to a large degree, I mean, shit, man. Like, yeah, I don't know. You know, like music gets sampled all the time. Lichtenstein, like I mean, how much worse is that than than? Uh, yeah. You know, I I don't know if that's the main reason people were giving him shit, but like that was that was one thing that I read, and it was on Twitter. So who for, the fuck cares, really? For some reason, this artist has a. I just get this feeling of seventies comic yeah. heavy metal and maybe it's because of his one art ad is in all the ads I don't know if it's here but the girl with the big boobs yeah, you yeah. know be, I always associate this kind of almost a Tolkien-esque kind of uh, I elf, get a, elfy you know with this stuff with, with this stuff in particular the, um, the the stuff from this period that he did reminded me of Bernie Wrightson a little bit too in a way okay I, well I can see it right there for sure but, you yeah know, um but I think he's got like on these pages, he's got a very yeah. distinct style. Yeah. I don't see him really cribbing anything from yeah. anybody hardcore. You know, I maybe I'm it. wrong. But yeah. For me, I it's like it. very cool looking stuff. Different. No, I, I like it a lot. 
oh, the easily identifiable as him from that period. I'd get a collection of that if there was. Amber's the second. Don't know this. Oh, this is a uh, Jim Starlin thing. Oh, is it? Painted black and white. Oh, that's an interesting idea. So this is like uh, yeah, precursor like to or or. I think it's probably painted. In my mind, I th oh. I think that he's using oh. this as a warm up to uh, Metamorphosis oh, Odyssey, which was fully painted. Huh. Step one, too. I like it. I wonder who they got to do that. Oh, wait. Does that say? Oh, yeah. Who does that say? Gray Morrow. Oh, Gray Morrow. That's, that's you know who Gray Morrow is, right? Yeah. That's, that's classic uh, eerie. Yeah. I know Gray Morrow from his black that's and white so work I, where I know it's like eerie. ink yeah, and yeah. washes and yeah, stuff yeah, that's, like that. Yeah, yeah. That's how I know him. That's, but that's, that's great. That is cool. That's funny. There you, whoa. We're going to yeah. end on that. What is this? It's an incredible it's like, airbrush painting. That's crazy. That's great. Thanks, guys, for watching. This is The Art of Comics. I'm here with Ariel. Feel free to like and subscribe and um, check out all that kind of good stuff. You can follow us on Instagram and all that jazz. Okay. Thanks, guys. Peace out.